Hey guys, my name is Loveless, and this time we are here with a one-shot. This one is called Katsudan, which is a little bit depressing of a mood, but the next one should be like um, a crack fic, or the next one-shot will be a crack fic, that's what I should say. So, let's get straight onto it. There's a cat that roams the grounds of UA. No one is quite sure how it got there, nor where it came from. There are things, however, that students of 1A knows, facts that are undeniable, that are known and understood well. Five simple facts that make up the basis of this cat. The first fact is simple. The cat is white with green eyes, with a coat that somehow looks silky smooth despite the obvious dirt on it. Dirt which leads people to understand the second fact. The cat is a stray. It has no owner, no collar, no markings, nothing, but dirt matted fur and a glowing green gaze that seems to bores into the eyes of whoever it locks sight with. The cat is a girl. This was found out when Coda managed to talk to her, when she approached him on one day where he was sitting alone during lunch. It was the day where Coda is simply too far overwhelmed by life, his introverted, timid nature driving him outside, away from his peers. She has a voice of a mother, wise with age and experience. The cat has a quirk. This was the fourth known fact, also learned by Coda, a minor empathy quirk that allows her to feel the emotions of those nearby. With no kittens of her own, she finds them in people, temporary ones. She has yet to have a permanent one. Admittedly, most people only need her for comfort for a day or so. Still, she's found her purpose this way receiving attention and offering her unconditional love to those who need it. She seeks out those who are saddened, whether it is a current emotion or one that's hidden underneath, and she acts as their caretaker. And this leads to the fifth fact. That fact is this white-haired, green-eyed, caring cat who has recently found someone who she has yet to leave, a permanent child of her own, the one who she chosen to raise, a child who is hurt, who hides their pain underneath a kind smile and endless passion. Azuku Midoriya is this child, and the only one who doesn't know the fourth fact. And oh, it is so painful to see. Because just like how there are five simple facts about this cat, there are five times that Midoriya's sadness was given away to 1A before the boy realized that his secret has been revealed. The first time, it was just one week after Coda learns the truth about the cat and her quirk. And one week since Coda told the class, minus Midoriya, who's doing some additional training. Now the class is gathering at training ground beta, ready for some quirkless sparring. Well, almost ready. Because all but one student has made it to the designated spot. Where's Midoriya? Aizawa asks, and the sounds of footsteps can be heard immediately after as if it's perfectly cute. Sorry, Midoriya exclaims, looking bashfully as he approaches. She wouldn't stop following me, no matter what I did. I was trying to get her to stay back at the locker rooms, but she kept meowing, and her cries sounded really sad. So I may or may not have stopped trying to keep her away. Uh, is that okay that she's here? She, of course, is the white cat that quickly catches up to Midoriya, until she's standing right by his side. From the way she positions herself, it is clear to 1A what the situation is, even as Midoriya gives a bashful smile. He's upset. Unfortunately, Aizawa doesn't seem to understand, and Koda is the one to spot the man starts to shake his head. Quickly, Koda waves his head, gathering his teacher's attention. Don't, please, Koda mouths. And then, when Aizawa's eyebrows narrowed, I'll explain later. Aizawa nods subtly, then turns back to Midoriya. She can stay, Aizawa relents, so as long as she isn't in our way. Then you'll need to find a way to send her off, problem child. And something must have happened when Aizawa said that name, because the cat shifted closer, tail lashing angrily as she stepped in front of Midoriya winding around his legs, brushing against him protectively until the green-haired boy relaxes. Coda and the rest of 1A hadn't even noticed that he'd been tense. 
Neither had Aizawa, apparently, because the man hesitates for a moment before calling out the first pairings. Bakugo and Kirishima, Aizawa says, and Midoriya relaxes even more when Kirishima's name is called. The boy usually pairs up with Bakugo for sparring matches. The cat doesn't leave Midoriya's side, except for when the boy spars, and even then, she stays close by. Midoriya's friend do their best to cheer him up, and by the time they reach the dorms, the cat is gone. But not for long. The second time that 1A realizes just how sad their friend may be is three days later. The students of 1A are all rushing to get to class at the same time, thanks to an electric-related quirk incident that left all their alarms knocked out. So now 20 students rushed at once, trying to exit the dorms to get to school. And when the class stepped out of the dorms, the cat was waiting there. And she only moved when Midoriya stepped outside, rubbing against his ankles before walking by his side. Huh, Midoriya mumbers, voice soft. She's been showing up in the morning since she first followed me. Do you think it's because I fed her a few days ago? It's not. They all know. But they don't know how to tell Midoriya that the cat's following him because she knows that about his sadness, about the pain that he's hiding behind a perfect smile that they can't even see the cracks in. They don't know how to digest the fact that Midori has been seeing her for three days either, how to deal with his sadness that they never noticed and never knew was there. And so his peers shrugged, giving half-worded answers and letting him believe in his own theories. Midoriya is content as the cat strolls alongside him, all the way to the dorms to the main building of UA, smiling as she moves in tandem with him. When they reach the school, her friends see how gentle he is when he leans down to pet the cat's head and says, You stay outside, okay? I'll bring you some food at lunch. Got it? The cat meows, and then she sits. Delicate, protective, she watches Midoriya enter the school. It is only when he is gone that she turns away, disappearing once more. And the students can't help but hope that she'll stay away. For as much as she brings him joy, they hope that he wouldn't need her to bring him joy. But the third time came quickly, too quickly, and the cat was waiting outside when Midoriya moves to find her. This time, it is not all of 1A who comes with Midoriya, but simply his close friends. Although, the rest will hear about the encounter soon enough. And so it is Todoroki, Ida, Suyu, and Yudoraka who see the cat waiting for Midoriya, patient and calm as the green-eyed boy approaches her, smiling brightly as he makes his way. I brought food, Midoriya says to the cat, and she chirps in response, a noise that makes him smile even wider. How true that smile is, his friends no longer know but it still brings them relief as he sits beside the cat, showing her the bowl of katsudan before laughing as the cat tries to shove her head in the bowl. You can't have it all, Midoriya chides gently, lifting the bowl out of reach. I'll give you some pork, but you can't have it while it's hot, okay? Wait until it cools down at least. The cat meows, and Midoriya happily sets some pork on a napkin. For a moment, his friends assume that she'll try to eat it immediately, but the cat seems content to curl up next to Midoriya, eyes closed as he pets her with his free hand. She's very obedient, Ida notes, and Midoriya grins. Yeah, I wonder if she was a house cat at first, or if she has a minor intelligence quirk of sorts. She seems to understand me whenever I speak. It's really cool. Maybe she does have a quirk, Yudoraka said, as if she didn't already know the truth. Midoriya lights up at agreement, and for some reason, it hurts. Perhaps because they know it's a mask, or at least somewhat. But they do not know how long it has been one, and if it was ever real. Nor do they know just how much he's hurting. The rest of lunch passed in a subdued manner. Midoriya got distracted by giving the cat attention she wants, his friends more distracted by his hidden feelings, and when lunch ends, it's a daze of sorts. With Asui saying slowly, We need a head inside. All right, Midoriya agrees, although his smile ever so slightly dims as he does. Fades a bit as he stands. Bye, little cat. 
Do you not have a name for her? Todoroki asked, and Midoriya frowns. No. Tilting his head, Midoriya points out, She's not mine. I don't think... I don't think I have the right to name her. She's gonna wander off eventually. Most likely, and then she will have a different name to learn. It'll be silly to get attached, only to see her go, wouldn't it? His smile is even more faded, eyes losing their shine as he says this. It's almost like he means something else, remembering someone else, when he muses over the hypothetical situation. And so, Yudoraka hums and says, No, I don't think so. You don't? Midoriya asks, and Yudoraka shakes her head. No way, Deku! The cat moves closer, ever so slightly, and Yudoraka tries again. Midoriya, she's clearly bound to you. There's no way she'll leave. She practically chose you as her owner, Todoroki says, and Midoriya blinks in surprise. Really? Four nods are the immediate response, and so Midoriya looks at the cat with a thoughtful, curious expression. Do you want me to name you, then? A loud meow makes him laugh, and Midoriya hesitates before asking, How about Katsudan? Another meow, and Midoriya's smile returns, and his friends come to realize maybe Midoriya does need Katsudan in his life, to make him happier. But does that have to be a bad thing? No, they think. No, it doesn't have to be. And so, when the fourth time comes, it is not too bad. No, it's more of just amusing, at first at least, because when Midoriya comes downstairs in the morning on a normal sunny Sunday, he's holding Katsudan in his arms, wearing a perplexed expression. She was in my room, Midoriya explained, looking just as confused as his peers felt, especially when he adds, my door was locked, my window wasn't, but I'm on the second floor. She must have wanted to be with you, Cyril said, voice thick, and he couldn't quite make eye contact with Midoriya. No one can. Not when Katsudan is pressing her face into the boy's hand so insistently, as if to distract him. No, when they glance at the boy's face again, only to see how his eyes seem red. The fact that Katsudan had felt the need to be there for Midoriya at night when the boy should have been free from bad feelings and simply allowed to rest, it is a realization that pierces the hearts of quite a few students. And so they encourage Midoriya to keep her, even if it means disobeying a rule or two, as if they cared about rules more than their sunshine friend's happiness. The fifth time that Midoriya's secret sadness is pointed out is not so much the cat's presence that strikes 1A, but rather the announcement from their teacher. I'll now tell you this, while Midoriya is busy, Aizawa says just for a moment after he sent the boy to bring some papers to Yamada-sensei, Katsudan trolling after him despite the school rules against having pets inside the halls, as if Nezu would ever truly force an animal off his campus. Katsudan, Midoriya's cat, is being registered as a therapy cat, Ignoring the 19 pairs of eyes staring at him, Aizawa adds, Midoriya has been told that the cat is allowed to be with him, but we didn't tell him about the cat's quirk, or the fact that we know about his mental well-being. We will be talking to him soon, so do your best to not spring this on him. Got it? Quickly, the students of 1A agreed. And just in time, as Midoriya returns just a few moments later, the trip short and efficient. Sorry I took so long, Midoriya mumbers, as if he took long at all. Katsudan tried to steal Yamada Sensei's pencil to give it to me. I had to keep returning it to him. Katsudan simply purrs in acknowledgement, now draped around his neck like a satisfied, sentient version of Aizawa's capture weapon. Is that what she is? Maybe so. They share a similar purpose, after all, being made to protect their owner. Maybe that's what a therapy cat is, in the end. Protection. If so, the students of 1A welcomed Katsudan with open arms, because Midoriya deserves all the protection that he can get, even if it's from his own thoughts. It was just over one month when Katsudan first arrived into Midoriya's life. 
that the boy finds out the significance and is not because one of his peers explained it to him, nor because Aizawa sat him down, but because of the blonde from 1B. Surprisingly, it's not Monoma, who undoubtedly would broadcast Midoriya's underlying pain to the world. No, it's Pony, the girl from America who does not always say what she means to, and sometimes says more than she meant to, and she let it slip. It's when she passed Midoriya in the hall at the end of the day, only to pause seeing Katsunan perched on his shoulders, keeping a watchful gaze on the halls. Oh, she cries out, it's the empath. I'm sorry, Midoriya asks, and soon not to roll beams. The empath, the cat's quirk. She feels sadnesses, tilting her head. Sunatori asks, are you sad? Midoriya doesn't answer. No, instead Midoriya turns around, going back the exact way he came, right back to his classroom. Instead, Midoriya opens the giant door to 1A, eyes instantly locking on Aizawa's form. The man still at the podium, organizing papers. Yes, Aizawa asks, and when his eyes widen ever so slightly when he sees Midoriya in the doorway, Katsudan's tail flickering back and forward, ears swiveling with worry. Worry for Midoriya, who looks unsure, hesitant, scared, betrayed? She feels emotions, Midoriya mumbers. As though his eyes widen even more, too noticeably to brush it off, voice dropping even more. Midoriya repeats, she feels emotions. She goes to people who are sad. She does, as I agrees, a voice more gentle than it usually is, cautious, caring. You know? A shake of his head, disbelief. And then, you all knew, didn't you? We did, Aizawa agrees. Were you going to tell me that you knew for, for a month? I was going to bring it up this weekend, Aizawa admits. Your friends are worried, Midoriya. We all have been. Why? Midoriya asks. I'm, I'm fine. Katsudan bats his head lightly, then muzzles into him. Midoriya's face drops even more. You don't have to lie, Aizawa says, still gentle, still soft. Kid, it's okay to be sad. But I shouldn't be, Midoriya protests. I'm happy. I have friends. I go to UA. Katsudan is wonderful. My life is good now. Now? Eraser thinks. But that's not what he says. Instead, what comes out of his mouth is, you can be both at the same time. Current joy doesn't erase old wounds, kid. But it doesn't make sense. It doesn't. Not to Midoriya. Why should he be sad when things are good now? Shouldn't he just move on? Forgive and forget? Right? Why can't he forget? It's not always easy to forget, as I admitted. And Midoriya wonders if between Katsudan and his mumbling habit, he ever was able to hide the underlying pain he feels almost constantly. But it's okay. It is? Midori asks. Because how can it be okay if he can't forget, can't move on? Is he not broken? You're not broken, as I says. And Midoriya wonders if the light was tricking him because Aizawa's eyes look teary, and that can't be right. Kid, you're not. Shattered then, dented, Midoriya offers, and Aizawa shakes his head. You can't get through life without marks, Aizawa says, but then, stepping closer, putting a hand on Midoriya's head and ruffling his hair. But you can patch them up. How? Midoriya asks, and Aizawa offers him a grin. Support. Luckily, it seems like you have quite a lot of that. And maybe he does. With Katsudan still nuzzling into him and his friends to make him smile and his teacher to, to look after him too, maybe they're right. Maybe Midoriya can be sad and be okay at the same time. 
And then when he forgets, or even if he never does, he'll be happy. And even if he is, he knows that Katsudan won't leave his side and neither will anyone else. And that's, that's enough. Sincerely, truly, Midoriya beams. Oh my God, that's just so fucking cute. I really got into it at the end. I'm like, I'm just, I was into this fucking story. But also was just like, hey, I'm a person who deals with depression too. And like many others. Uh, so guys, if you're dealing with depression, like Midoriya, like me, you are not alone. Of course. Find your support systems. You know what to do. Um, so yeah. And also if you want to see more of this, you also know what to do. I will continue doing my thing. So, yeah. Bye.